Hi, this is Will with this week's Mission Insight. Um, we've been in our blessed rhythms, which are the simple steps we can take to bless those around us. And I'm really excited to be talking about this topic today because it's food. Well, actually even better, it's eating of said food. Now, some things are just better together like peanut butter and jelly. Now, this is also true of the two practices of listening and eating. Now, why do these two make such a, a powerful one-two punch? Well, first, because neighbors seldom share meals together. In our individualistic society, I mean, hospitality is seen as an extravagant gesture of goodwill. And second, when the meal is centered on good conversation to get to know your neighbor, it comes across as a tremendously generous act. Much of Jesus' ministry involved conversation around the table. In the book of Luke alone, there are 10 stories of Jesus dining and talking with various people. Active listening coupled with a, a good meal can catapult a casual acquaintance into a growing friendship. You know, it's been said uh, that the Gospel of Luke is based around meals, that Jesus is either coming from a meal uh, or he's on his way to his next meal. And his first miracle happens at a wedding feast. Possibly his most famous meal is the Last Supper. And we have a picture in Revelation of a great feast that is to come one day. Meals were and are still important to Jesus. And that's why we're focusing on the E of eat in the blessed rhythms. In Discipleship Pathway, we learn to realize and, and to see ourselves as, as ordinary missionaries wherever we are, to live more intentionally and incarnationally like Jesus. And we found that time and time again that one of the places where the greatest breakthrough in spiritual conversations happen is around the table. You know, I often joke that if you uh, share some good barbecue with someone, you usually break into a new level of friendship and vulnerability. See, eating is something we need every day. It's like breathing. Um, and when it comes to breathing in meals, as followers of Jesus, we should pattern our life after his and break away time to time with other disciples of Jesus to share a meal where we debrief, uh, we pause the action, and we enjoy an unhurried time to celebrate, mourn, and also to prepare for mission. And if it comes to breathing out meals as followers of Jesus, we should also pattern our life after his and find ways to open doors in our tables to make room for people who may be far from God to taste what belonging within the kingdom and the family of God is like. Now, sometimes Jesus does this with large crowds by feeding them, and sometimes he takes over parties like he did with Matthew and his notorious sinner friends. Um, or maybe sometimes he did it with people like Zacchaeus. Guys, we can contextualize the sizes of gatherings in our lives, and sometimes we might throw a, a large party and gather with dozens of people, Sometimes we may share a meal with just a handful of people. And there are times when um, the conversation requires a more intimate setting of just two or three. One thing is for certain, the more meals we share and the more we become like family with those around us and those we're uh, discipling, the more opportunity we have to not only share physical bread, but also spiritual bread. If you have any questions, you can check it out more at fremont.church. Thanks.